recording. Okay, we're good. All right, let me get my thoughts again. Oh yeah, so the second homework, the second video uh, is much quicker. It's only 34 questions and I didn't, honestly, I didn't talk about, I don't think I talked about anything other than I just did the problems. So you're gonna get through that more quickly, but still get a little practice, all right? Uh, I know I've got to do some imaginaries uh, and I forget if there was any other request, but we'll, we'll turn our attention to the imaginaries today at the end of class. But right now I'm going to build up the quadratic model and the exponential a little bit because uh, I kind of know where we're headed with all this. Um, anything else? Oh yeah. So if somebody can try to access the second homework and the video and make sure that you still have accessibility, I hope I don't have to change the settings every day. I'm hoping that it's global at this point, but I'm not sure. Okay, so uh, write to me quickly. Some of you jumped on homeworks pretty quickly yesterday and I found it was nice because then I found out there was a problem with accessibility. So somebody after class can just check and see if it's uploaded properly, that would be great. And email me if it isn't, all right? All right, so let's get uh, rolling here and somebody joining us. It does work. I checked it. Woo! That was quick. Thank you, Emily. Emily said it's up and running. All right, so here we go. Going to build up more slowly what you've been working on and why it works. All right, here's the numerical table. Obviously, it continues in this direction, right? Both directions. Here's your squaring process. Now, a lot of times, Folks look at that superficially and just say, okay, great. Those numbers get squared, those are your results. Your challenge really is to look at things more deeply uh, at a more than superficial level, All right? So if we look at this, changes by seven, changes by five, changes by three, so on and so forth, right? That's not linear change right off the bat because we're changing by one each time but the y values change differently, okay? So therefore we don't have a linear function. That's step one. Compare this table to that table. I think you're gonna find that if you compare, you're gonna see that the y side of the table is identical. 16, nine, four, one, so on and so forth. Okay, it's identical. But we're still changing by one, Okay, still changing by one. There's a minimum here. There's a minimum. Everything else is positive on the y side. Everything's positive except for that. Therefore, that's very important. It's also in the middle of a big pattern. It's in the middle of a big pattern. So that tells me that squaring the number zero is critical. Squaring the number zero is critical. Now, the critical number here seems to be the number five, giving me the smallest area. Hence, that statement, right? When am I gonna get zero out? When I put a, a five in, right? So what does the statement X minus five do? It actually measures linear change from the number five. And guess what the x-axis is? The x-axis is a one-dimensional shape. It's a one-dimensional shape. And all of algebra is based on geometry, okay? Based on geometry. I'm gonna be talking for about seven, eight minutes, and then we're gonna do, okay? So just try to keep your concentration for that seven or eight minutes. All right, Rene Descartes, French mathematician. All right, talked about amounts. You know, Rene Descartes is the one who gave us this X, Y coordinate system. And he, you, he was around, I think, 1596. But if you remember 1600 to 1650, you got a little sense of when this came on the scene. And it was very shortly after this that Newton and Leibniz really worked on calculus, about 50 years later, 50 years later, is when cat so things are built on top of each other. I'll just give you a little historical perspective. But I decided to show you square area in a little different context, but still amount vertically, amount vertically. So when you square zero, you don't get anything. 
When you square, square the number one, you get one square unit. When you square the number two, you get four. When you square the number three, you get nine. Okay, and you can see it's not linear change. In fact, it's accelerating. We've got acceleration, okay? And in calculus, you're gonna study position, velocity, and acceleration. Okay, those are the three things you study. Right now, you're trying to learn about position functions. You're just dealing with position functions with a hint of change at a y-intercept yesterday, with a little hint of how do we measure change, okay? My calculus classes are built on the following model, all right? This is the following model. Can anybody tell me what you're looking at? New England. Thank you. Was that our Manchester friend or Han Hanover? Who was it that said that? Tanner. Tanner. And where are you from, Tanner? Leverett. Leverett. Okay, so you recognized where you lived. Okay, so what is this? What is this arrow representing? That's New England, by the way, Cape Cod. I, I mean, I'm a great artist, you can tell. So what is this straight line representing? Any idea? Can you think of anything that does that in New England, roughly? That's Route 91, okay? And so my calculus class is totally built on grandma driving on Route 91, where right here, that's Vermont, that's Massachusetts, and that's the border, and I call that mile marker zero. Mile marker zero, okay? Years ago, before the advent of the cell phone, if you got stuck on Route 91, they had telephones on the highway. And if grandma broke down at mile marker seven and the closest highway, the closest phone, emergency phone to call the state police was at mile marker nine, what did grandma have to do to get to the phone? Well, she had to walk two miles. Right, so she had to walk two miles if she was at mile marker seven and she walked to mile marker nine, she walked two miles, okay? Now, there's the reason you study mathematics. Everybody says, why do we study mathematics? And it's a very simple answer. To save grandma, okay, to save grandma. Now, in calculus, we write the equation of lines tangent to graphs all the time. So in the context of position, velocity, and acceleration, grandma's position as a function of time. Here's a linear function. What do I know about grandma's position? At one o'clock today, at one o'clock today, grandma is at mile marker five, which is still about five miles from Brattleboro just went across a straight line heading north. And she's traveling at three miles an hour. Now, if that isn't a reason to study math, I don't know what is, because grandma should not be driving on Route 91 at three miles an hour. Okay, this is where you're headed with the mathematics. All right, just a little glimpse. Keep on coming. So for instance, I know at three o'clock today, grandma's at mile marker nine, and she's traveling at six miles an hour. We can't see the board. Thank you. Okay, so that is a, I'm thinking of that right now as an input of time. That's a position. And I know that if I linearize this, she's going to be going at six miles an hour. You don't know how I did that, but I'm giving you a sneak peek to the future. Now, what did we do yesterday? Maybe you didn't kind of grasp some of it. Can you see this all right? That square area, yes? And we did some binomial squaring. We did x minus five squared yesterday. We did a bunch of that. Well, I did. I'm the one working on the board. And are you familiar with x minus five times x minus five? Yeah. x squared minus five x, another minus five x, another minus five times minus five, 25. x squared minus 10 x plus 25. Yes? Everybody okay with that? I never did that out, did I? I never did it out. I simply went right here and I said, we square 
then we get x squared minus 10x plus 25. Why didn't I write it out? I paid enough attention to the process that I never have to write it out because I understand the pattern. Is everybody okay with looking in this and writing that? Hopefully so. So where does this come from? Where does that come from? Well, over here, x times x is x squared. That's minus 5x. Minus 5 times x is minus 5x. How many of them do you have? I think two, yes? All right. Well, can you see what you get when you multiply those two things? What do you get when you multiply those two things? Minus 5x, yes? And if you know you got two of them, can't you just write it? And a negative times a negative is a positive. And squaring a five gets you 25. So is there any reason to write that out? I don't think so. So can you do this for me? 2a plus 3 squared, can you just write your answer now? I'm trying to save you time. So I'll take, put a little effort in it, see if you can get it. And we're going to build on that to our exponential rules. So write your answer out. Should take you 10 seconds once you see the pattern. All right, 2a plus 3 squared, 2a squared is 4a squared. Yes, there's your first term. 2a times 3 is 6a. What are you going to do with it? You're going to double it. And 3 squared is 9. Okay? Enough time on that because we're going to do it on every worksheet the rest of the year. I have every confidence you'll get good at that. All right, let's build up a little bit more. I'm almost done here. Uh, so what's the key number? For x minus 5 squared, what's the, that, what's the most important number there? Minus 5. Because we know this is x squared minus 10x plus 25, right? As a, right? So, yeah, so positive 5. Positive 5. And 5 minus 5 is what? 0. And what's the most important square area? 0. So, let's put 5 in. Let's do it 5 minus 5. And let's fill in the boxes. I'm not going to fill this one in. That's the constant. What's five times five? 25. Isn't that this? What's five times negative five? Negative five times five, negative 25. Can you see that that adds up to minus 50? Are you starting to see the two to one ratio in those first two terms? And that's at the vertex, right? When this thing equals zero. Okay, so I'm just trying to layer a little bit of understanding to this squaring process. Tomorrow I'll complete the square, uh, square, yeah, probably our square. I'll complete the square uh, geometrically for you tomorrow. Okay, but we're slowly building conversations around what you're doing and why. This is being recorded. Wouldn't hurt you tonight. Forget about what we've just done. You're going to forget about it and then come back to it. All right? And that's how you build those connections in your brain. All right, now, time to do some work. We're going to do problems together. I'm going to give you a minute to do a problem. All right. Write the equational line that passes through the point 320 and 817. Write the equational line through 320 and 817. And I'm going to scroll and see if anybody new came in at the... So, Horn, Sophie, Sunny, Tiana. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, I think we're pretty good. Jackson made it. Yep. Yeah. Rowan's here. Oh, that's enough time for the equation of lines. All right. Ah, so, what are we going to do with the number three? We're going to make a zero. All right, we want 20, I got the marker. I wish they put the letter Y on the right, whoever, you know, decided to, now it's input to output, go figure. 
three to eight, change to five. Linear change, 20 to 17, down three. There's your function. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Hopefully that's okay. Write the equation of that quadratic. Vertex, nine, 300. So what do we say? X minus nine squared plus 300 equals Y for starters. Now we've got to get a trajectory that goes through this coordinate. That's all about multiplication. Another conversion. What should I write over here? Five. Actually, 25. Because we're measuring what? Area. All right? So the side lengths of the squares have changed by five units. But what does this function measure? Squared change. Okay? So in essence, it's this. It's really plugging 14 in, subtracting 9, and squaring is how the numbers have changed right now. They have gone up 25 units. Do I want to go up 25 to get from here to here? Not really, right? From 300 to 347, I want to go up how much? 47 units. Okay, so let me show that pictorially. So I have moved from nine to 14, I have moved over five units. If I square that, I should go up 25, but I didn't go up 25, I went up 47. So I want the number 25 to act like the number 47 in terms of a conversion. Let's do another one of these right now. So Rowan, Rowan's kicking a soccer ball. I can't kick one anymore, so I'm picking Rowan. Any other soccer enthusiasts in there? Any ladies playing uh, soccer or fellas playing soccer? Yeah. I do. I know Rowan. Who does? Maurice. Maurice. All right. So we'll use Maurice the next time. Rowan right now is kicking a soccer ball. It's three feet high. Three feet high. You go, boy. Boy, there goes the hip. He's got his foot. Nice. Just like a plank. Hits that ball. No spin. No spin. That ball goes up. Two seconds later, it hits its maximum height, 67 feet. And then I think it actually comes back down. Here's your graph. Zero, three. There's the soccer ball. Kicks it up. Two, comma, 67. That's a parabola. We're actually using a quadratic to measure time to height. So height as a function of time. We'll put it in functional notation. Give it your best shot, and then I'll tell you what it is, in case you didn't get it right. See if you can get it right. Oh, did I fail What's, the, non, what's the coordinate at the top? So much. Rowan's been practicing so much that at four seconds, he caught it on his foot. Woo! What's the coordinate at the top? Uh, two comma 67. Okay. All right. Okay. Two comma 67. Yeah. Let's see how many parts of this you can get. First off, where's the pattern emanate from? What's the most important mathematical coordinate on the board? 
I heard different things, but the vertex. I don't care if I go into the future, what's the ball doing? It's going down, right? And if I look in the past, if I were to, you know, the old days we had VCRs. And if we rewound them, if you put it in reverse, you would have seen the ball go down. Okay, if you played it backwards. So that's where the pattern emanates from. How am I going to communicate that to you, to the reader? What am I going to write? I'm going to write the following. So what's the most important time when you see a statement like that? What's the most important time when you see a statement like that? The beginning time? Well, the beginning time is zero. That's when I started the watch, right? And what number is being highlighted in that expression? Is it two? It's two. And what happens when I put a two in? You get Don't I get that? If I put two in, two minus two is zero. Don't I get zero squared? And beginning of the class, didn't we say zero gets you zero is the most important place on a parabola? We've just, we've just created the most important place on that parabola. And what is the amount? You know, you put a two in, you get a 67. And now we're going to build quadratic change from there. All right? So what am I going to multiply by? Any thoughts on the numerator? Change in y, isn't it? 65. Right now I'm here. Right now I'm here. Looking at it mathematically, I'm at 67. I don't care which one you pick, 0, 3, or 4, 3. Where's the ball going? Is it 64? Think about the ball at 67 feet high, maxed out at 67. Where's the ball going to go? Down. Down. Down has a symbol in math. What is the symbol for down? Negative. Negative. I had a Waldorf kid tell me it was a down arrow, which was cute. It's a symbol. Okay. It's down. How much is the ball going to drop? 64 feet. 64 feet. Right? And what does the denominator of these multipliers represent? The change that the squared change. The squared. The squared change. And what is the squared change? Four. 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 Okay. Now get four. Can you expand this for me, please. Minus 16, t minus 2 squared plus 67. Have we been working on binomial squaring again today? Yes. Expand that for me, please. Okay, we're going to bring it back together here. Did anybody get better and quicker at t minus 2 squared right here? Did anybody write it out who didn't write it out before? Without having to write it out, were you able to see that pattern? Maybe yes, maybe no. Okay? Is everybody okay to that point as to what I'm doing? All right, so the, this function becomes, I'm just going to cut to the chase, I'll write y. And, well, I could use y and x. We'll stick with h of t. That's what I started with. Height as a function of time. So you have a coordinate system where you have time in seconds, and you have height as a function of time. That's the ball. Okay? And that is equal to minus 16 t squared plus 64 t plus 3. That's what you should have gotten for an answer. I'm not worried about you learning how to do that. We practice it. Everybody gets good at it. You might have made a mistake today. 
you won't by midterm. So that is the function we're working with. What did we do with that function yesterday? We did a lot. You know the drill, go do the drill. Minus 16 T squared. Let's see if you come back to this. Go try it. Everybody know what I'm asking? Y-intercept, rate of change at the y-intercept, vertex and roots. Can anybody tell me what the roots mean in this physical context? Where it hits the ground? Yes, Rowan missed, he tried to catch it, he, but he, he, he swung and missed and it hit the ground. And we're gonna find out at what time it hits the ground. So you got 60 seconds to bang that out. All right, so let's grab it together. What's the first thing I'm going to do? Put the y intercept on. Okay, that's three. Thank you very much. You have learned something. I got the y intercept. What's the next thing I'm going to do? Find the rate at the y intercept. Can you tell me what that rate is? Um, 64. 64. Can you tell me what that 64 represents? It means that it's going um, up 64. 64 what? Um, units. What are those units? Um, Anybody? Feet per second. That's the force he put on the ball. Right? 64 feet per second. You know, baseball now, I don't know how many people still watch baseball. Guy hits a home run. You know, what they're reporting is it came off the bat at... 108 miles per hour or something. I, I haven't even been watching it enough, but they're measuring the force of the ball coming off the bat, right? So correct. And then what? Cup shape down, true, cup shape down. So is our X positive or negative? Positive. Positive, and how are we gonna find that number? Um, you you take um, 64 divided by 16. 16, which is four, and then we do what with it? Half. Cut it in half. It. And then what do we do with that two? You plug it in. You plug it in, and you get minus 64 plus 128 plus three. Want to add that up for me? What's minus 64 plus 128? 62. It's actually 64. <laughs> it's the opposite of the first number. And what's 64 plus 3? 67. Wow. Whoa. Geez, you know, I think we got that. I think we just saw Rowan kick the ball and catch the ball. No, he missed it. It hit the ground. So what's this value? I know at four seconds. It came back to three because of the symmetry. But what is this? Is it more than four seconds or less than four seconds? What do you think? About four. It's got to be a little more than four, right? Because it went down a little further. So how do I get that answer? What do I write? What is this time right there? Can we agree that it's measured from the number two. Isn't it a little more than two? Can anybody tell me what the square root I write here is? How far do I have to go from 67 to get to zero? Minus 67. Minus 67. Right? And what do I divide it by? Do you remember mechanically what I divide it by? Negative 16. Negative 16. Okay. 
A moment ago, we had height as a function of time is equal to, let me see if I remember, minus 16 t minus 2 squared plus 67, yes? Yes? Can I make that a zero? We'll put the zero on this side, okay? So what am I gonna do with the 67? Am I not gonna subtract it? What am I gonna do with multiplication by minus 16? Am I not gonna divide it? What am I gonna do with squaring? Am I not gonna do plus or minus square rooting? And what am I gonna do with subtraction of two? Right? Now, what is 64 divided by 16? 64 divided by 16 is four, is it not? And what is the square root of four? Two. So isn't this a little bit bigger than two seconds? Isn't it just a little bit more? And then it hits the ground. Uh, I forgot what this was, minus 16. What's that represent? Anybody know? I'm sorry I'm not working in metrics. I, I, I never did. Anybody can tell me the physical context for minus 16 T squared? It's a little more powerful than 64 feet per second. It's got a little more power there. Anybody know what power we're talking about? Why does the ball come back to Earth? Gravity. Well, that's what you're looking at. You're looking at the force of gravity. Okay, and if you want to know what kind of force you got to put on something to escape gravitational force on Earth, it's pretty big. It's pretty big. It's kind of like rocket booster big. Okay, and Rowan, I, you know, I know Rowan likes soccer, but I don't think he's kicking the ball into outer space. Okay. All right, so there's a little physical context, just a little physical context for something you worked on yesterday, as in it gets applied to studying things in the real world. And when did we get gravity? I'm being facetious here. It's when the apple hit Newton on the head, right? <laughs> anyway. Binomial squaring. Back to binomial squaring. Can you do x minus 9 squared real quick? Anybody give me the answer? X squared minus 18x. So I can, uh, can, get, can start to recognize voices here. Who's talking? Alma. 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 Yeah. Alma. Uh, Alma. Yes. Right? Yeah. I think mm -hmm. All right, good. So shout it out. Um, x squared minus 18x plus 81. Yeah, thanks for having the courage to talk in the remote setting. All right, now we're going to binomially square 3x to the fifth minus 4y cubed squared. Let's square that. I'm going to get a different marker. This one's dying. You know the Spanish one, that was a good, what, like, four years of Spanish. All right, so who wants to shout this one out? A little rule of exponents here. Anybody square this for me? 9x to the 10th, right? x to the 5th times x to the 5th, right? Is somebody trying to get into class here? Yes, to unmute. Asked to unmute, yeah. Oh, learning something about Zoom here. All right, double the product, three times minus four is minus 12, so minus 24 what? X to the fifth, Y cubed. Squaring a negative is a positive, squaring a four is a 16, and Y cubed squared is Y to the sixth. Okay with that? All right, linear function. Name five coordinates. Four, y equals minus uh, two fifths x minus four plus six. Let's get five coordinates.
What's the important X? Oh, Anybody sure. comes in and say, hey, Mr. V, this is so and so, and I think that's an important number. Anybody? Four. All right, who is that again? Alma. Ah, thank you. What's the next? Fill in the X down. Nine. Yep, next. 14. 14. 19. 20. Pretty good. For those of you who didn't know, can you now look at the problem and see why we're doing that? Obviously, this is the what. It tells you how to change your X's. So what's the Y value that's important? Six. Next. Four. Two. Two. Does a 19 get a zero? Let's find out. Let's put 19 in. What's 19 minus four? 15. 15. How many times does five go into 15? Three. Three. What's two times, what's negative two times three? Negative six. What's negative six plus six? Zero. Oh boy, that works. Wow. Boy, we can get a lot of coordinates without any work. So what's this course about? It's about not working. Mathematicians are lazy. We just want to be able to answer things. Exponential. Newton's law of grazing. Okay, Newton's law of grazing is all about sheep. Okay, there have always been at least two sheep in the town of Gill. But in the year 2009, there were eight. I think I had six of them. In the year 2020, right now there's 26. Thank God the sheep population, because they're such a pretty animal to watch. They're a very smart animal. I had sheep for like six to eight years. I didn't want them. My wife said, oh, that's a pretty lammy. Can we have that lammy? And I said, I'm not taking care of them. I'm not taking care of them. So what happened? We got the sheep. What happened next? Her mom was ill, Alzheimer's, terrible disease. So she lived with us for six to eight years. So guess who got to take care of the sheep every day? Took him out to the pasture by the baseball field every morning. One morning I saw a mountain lion. Wasn't that fun? True story. Uh, hour, put the fence up, get the water out there in the morning. Hour at night, six to eight years. But I love the sheep. They were a very, very nice animal. So very, very good animal, very smart animal. All right, write the equation. You can write the equation of that exponential function as quickly as you write the equation of a line with enough practice. You haven't had enough practice yet, but we're gonna get practice. So let's get some practice right now. Boom, see what you can do. I'm gonna even color coordinate. I'm gonna even color coordinate. 2009 is gonna be in blue. 220 is in blue. Do colors come across the screen? Can that, does that look a little different? Yeah, it does. So what does Y represent? Sheep. Letter Y represents sheep. Population of sheep. P of sheep. Population of sheep. What's the most important population? Three. Is that right. seven? We've got three, three populations of sheep, two, eight, and 26. What do you think the most important population is? Three. Three? I'll see the number three. Wait. Oh, I, I, you're probably looking at this. Oh, two. Yep, that's the most important population of sheep. Because if we didn't start with those two, just like Adam and Eve, nobody's here. Got to have two sheep. And then the population did what? Up arrow or down arrow? Oh. Up, yeah, it grows. But instead of arrows, instead of the Waldorf school, we'll go with the plus sign. All right? And how much did our sheep population grow? Reading from left to right. Reading from left to right, how much did our population grow? Six. Six? Yeah, we went to eight. 
And um, then it grew again. Grew by six, went up by six. Up by six, and then it went up again. How much did it go up by? 30. We got two. You're thinking linearly, right? And why are you thinking linearly? Because in Algebra 1, that's all they ever talked about was equations of lines. The biggest mistake in the history of mathematical teaching is everybody thinks that everything's an equation of a line. I got to break your mind of that mindset. Okay, so what did it go up from? 30. Two to 26. Two to 26. 24. 24. 24. It didn't go up six the second time. It didn't go up six the second time. It went up 24. So what kind of exponential model are we working with? That. That's what's happening. For the most part, the population of sheep is quadrupling. And how often is it quadrupling? Anybody know how often? How many years it takes to quadruple? Looking at the times, and I've highlighted the times in blue. Can anybody say again? Is it 11? Yes, it is 11, because from 2009 to 2020, 11 years have elapsed. So what am I going to write in blue? This is where we do our conversion. Let's see. In blue, I am going to write x minus. Anybody know what year is going to be highlighted here? When did we start talking about population of sheep? What's the first year? 2009. 2009. When I put in 2009, 2009 minus 2009 is zero. What is four to the zero? One. One. I just, I just made a complicated number into the number one. And what's one of the easiest numbers to work with in math? One. And how often am I going to do this? Every 11 years. So what do you think? If I was to do the next 11 years, let's go another 11 years. I'm still at y equals two here, right? I'm still at y equals two. How much am I gonna go up? How much am I gonna go up in the next 11 years? How did I get from this number to that number? 96. I went from this number to this number by multiplying by four. That's what four to the x is. Four to the x is four times four times four times four times four. What am I multiplying by four? The initial amount. The initial amount is getting multiplied by four. How often? Every 11 years. So that amount is gonna be exactly what you just said. I think you said 96, yes? Yeah. You're absolutely right. And what's 96 plus two? Because I'm on top of two, right? Isn't it 98? Let's see if it works. Is it okay if I write 24 divided by six as the number four now? If I go up another 11 years, I was at 2020, am I not at 2031? So what's 2031 minus 2009? Anybody know? 2031 minus 2009? What's 22 divided by 11? Two. What's four squared? 16. What's six times 16? What's six times 10 plus six? 96. 96. And what's 96 on top of two? 98. Okay, so that's how that works. This is day two. I said, how many days does it take to start to see the pattern? About four. Keep that in mind. Let's try one more. 
Keep track of time here. Okay, we're on track. So let's do an exponential decay. Always been, I don't want to do sheep. I don't want to, I don't want to decrease in sheep population. What's something that's cheery that decreases? Radiation. Oh, that's terrible. Thinking about a radio book, that's even worse. Let's just put some random numbers up here. All right, in blue. Let's put years. Let's put years still. Let's look at the year 1950. Okay? Kind of where suburban housewives are, 1950. And let's throw uh, 80 in here. Okay, and then let's go to the year, uh, how about 1999? Probably around when some of you were born, no? A little later, a little later. All right, so that's going to be uh, 80 to 10. Let's call that 47. I like that number. See if you can write that equation. All right. What's the most important y value? 10. I'm going to that y value next. How do I get from 10 to that y value? I shouldn't draw it there. 70 units of change to get up to here. 70 units of change from the number 10. How do I get to the next y value? I'm not going up 70 anymore. Thirty-seven. Now is thirty-seven over seventy bigger than one or less than one? It's less than one, right? So let's think of cutting my height in half. My height got cut in half. Cut in half again. I'm melting. I'm sorry. Uh, what am I headed towards? Zero. Zero. The floor, right. So the floor would be the asymptote. It's kind of like my walking to the, to the board, cutting the distance in half, cutting the distance in half, cutting the distance. Wouldn't I be getting closer to the wall, but never quite getting there? That's asymptotic behavior, okay? When I'm out here, I don't care what the X is, I'm pretty darn close to 10. Closer and closer and closer all the time. In fact, about a third, maybe a half, I'm closing that gap. So what are the X values that are important? 1950, how am I gonna tell you 1950 is important? That's how I'm gonna tell you 1950 is important. Can you see that? And how often am I doing this process? How often am I doing that 3740, 37 of that? 37 70s, it should be coming down more. 37 70s of that. How often am I doing that? 49. Every 49 years, 1950 to 1999. Did anybody get that on their own this time? I got a hand up, yes. Anybody else? Let me just keep them up for a second. I just wanna see how you're doing with that. Okay, okay, I'm starting to see some hands raised, okay? So doing homeworks together, you probably can help each other out. How many got further along that time than they did the last time? Any, any further? Okay. Uh, check in tomorrow before class a little early. Stay a little late. Happy to work a few with you if you want to try to accelerate your, your getting to that right. But remember, I think it takes about four days of practice before I start to see a group kind of have some confidence. Okay. So nobody's behind here. Just keep looking at it. We're going to do one more of those right now. One more. And then maybe I can sneak in some imaginary work over here on the side. I'm going to try to. 
but this is more important at the moment. If I don't get to imaginaries today, I'll open up with a discussion on imaginary numbers tomorrow. Okay, can you write that equation? What are the numbers, please? Uh, y equals zero is the asymptote. Mm -hmm. The exponential function passes through zero, one, and it passes through one comma 2.71. Okay. See if you can put the numbers together. Okay. What's the most important y value? The asymptote. How do I get from zero to one? I go up one. The next time I don't go up one, I go from a height of zero to 2.71. So how does this altitude compare to this altitude? In one unit of change, in one unit of change, I'm nearly three times the size of that. Not quite three times, not quite three times the size of that. That's where the base of exponential functions come from. What's the X that's important? The first one is zero. So I write X minus zero. And the next one is one. So it's changed by one. I'm losing this marker. So I'm gonna have to go all red in a second. Yeah, I'm gonna go all red. Okay, the first stage of learning is following. I hope you're starting to follow that conversation. Are there a lot of symbols there that I do not need to use? Yes. Do I need to write the number zero? No. Where's my eraser? I do not need to write the number zero. Do I need to write the number one times something? No. Do I need to do division by one? No. Do I need to do subtraction of zero? No. Do I need to do division by one? No. So you are looking at the exponential function 2.71 raised to the X. Okay. So if I started with 10 and I went one unit to the right, I'd be at 271. No, I said that wrong. I'd be at 27.1. Anyway, I, I wish I hadn't said that at all. Erase that from your mind. Exponential growth, 2.71. Anybody know the name of that function? Can anybody tell me what pi to the x is? Anybody tell me what that is numerically? An approximation is fine. Is there another way to write pi? Anybody, anything come to your mind? 3.14. Yeah, that's approximately 3.14 to the x. 2.71 to the x is the most important function in algebra. There are two things that I really want you to do well coming out of this class is understand that function and your unit circle work with trig, which will start on Monday. 2.71 to the x is equal to e to the x. The letter e is more important than pi, right? And when you see the letter e, I want your brains to think 2.71, okay? That's the function the world works on, money and banking and physics. Calculations are done in terms of e to the x. Okay, so that starts our discussion. We will develop it from there as to how we're going to use it. And we're going to use it a lot. I will definitely sometime today 
give you a memorization sheet of some numbers I want you to learn and we'll start talking about them in greater detail tomorrow. Okay, let's end with some quick eye work in the next three minutes. And then anybody who wants to stick around and say hi is welcome to. Okay, so we're gonna do some quick eye work here. All right, so mathematicians, I had this conversation with either Lauren or Grace, I forget the beginning of the class. Who, who did I have that with? Was it, was it Amit? It was Lauren. It was Lauren, okay. Short term memory is terrible. All right, so square area, negative one. There is nothing times nothing that gets you negative one for real numbers. One times one's one, negative one times negative one is one, right? So mathematicians are stuck with solving x squared plus nine, which could have been written as x squared plus zero x plus nine. So nine is the y-intercept. Nine is the y-intercept. Zero means it's flat, which means that's the vertex of this calculation. Now, when does that calculation equal zero? You'd have to imagine going over three units. If you went over three units and squared it, you'd go up nine from there. But we need to go in the other direction. We need to go down nine from nine to get to zero. Okay, so what did mathematicians do? They made a number up. Okay, they made a number up. They, in I, well, first off, by definition, by definition, that is from yesterday, I hope you recognize a square root. So this is the square root of negative one. And so the square root of negative one, we are gonna call the number I. Now, which is easier to write, right or left? That, fewer strokes of the pen. Okay, so when you see the letter I, you gotta think that the square root of negative one times the square root of negative one gets us negative one, but we're gonna call it I times I. Okay, so I squared gets us that area. So it gets us that area, okay? So let's solve this. Let's solve x squared plus nine equals zero. X squared equals negative nine, okay? So I've got negative nine in here. What do I multiply to get negative nine? Three I times three I. Three times three is nine, and I times I is I squared, and what did we say I squared is? Negative one. So really, you're imagining, when you're solving this, textbook would say you got an I axis coming out from the wall. I like you to envision it as, let's turn this thing upside down. Let's turn it upside down. Doesn't it intersect the x-axis at three? Right? If you turn it upside down, it intersects at three. Three squared is nine units of change. But you are imagining things. You're imagining it going the other way. Okay, so that starts. 30 seconds. Let's just do one real quick. Let's just do a mechanical. Two plus five I squared. All right? Let's do that out and see if we can make a little bit of progress on that before I sign off on you. Okay, see if you can get that answer in 20 seconds. It's exactly how much time I have, 20 seconds from now. 15 seconds left in class. 10 seconds. Square, four, double the product, 20i. Square plus 25i squared. What is 25i squared minus 25? I got one second to go. Four, oh, didn't get it done. Shucks. Four minus 25 minus 21 plus 20i is the answer to that problem. Okay. Thank you all for joining. Same radio station, different time tomorrow. Guys, check your schedules. I'll be here. All right, so you're all free to go. Hopefully you learned something today. That's the goal, make a little gains in certain areas. Tomorrow, more problems you do. All right, the further we get along here, the more I can say, okay, let's do these problems quickly. All right, and I know I missed about 10 or 20 that I wanted to ask today, but I'm still gotta layer it with some, some geometric and graphical perspectives. All right, any comments before anybody goes? Meeting's over, I'm still here, but you can all drift off, enjoy your day. Oh, one thing. If you get a chance, really, really thank the folks in the dining hall. They're working their tails off. 
to get food out with very little help. You know, no more work jobs. They're down on staff and they're doing their darndest to feed you well. So if you get a chance, look somebody in the eye and say, hey, thanks. I know you're working hard. Okay. Take care, everybody. Anybody needs to stick around or ask some questions, feel free. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Yeah. I just, um, I, t I mentioned it yesterday, but I'm home right now and yep. I'm moving. So I won't be at like in class Monday. I'll be there in class by Thursday. I'll keep the camera on. And what I'll do is when we do our workshop, I will plant the camera in one spot so you can interact with your classmates. Okay. Yeah, so I'm going to hand out a worksheet, probably got 40, 50 problems on it. And you go through it at your own pace. Okay. Right? So do I just zoom during that Just time? zoom in, just zoom into class. All right, thank you. Okay, take care. Um, I have a question. Yep. Could you go over how you find the vertex slowly? Sure. Yep. So Easiest way, sure. We'll do. Can I keep working for a minute? Sure. Yeah, is it okay if I work for oh, a Please. And I, I, I'm sorry that I'm not getting to the board as quickly as I'd like. But I will actually, can you hang on for like two minutes so I erase the board and then go into the uh, office area? To yeah. That board so I can get out of Mr. Reader's way. Thank you. Just take me home. So you're going to get into the science today? Huh? Yeah, I've got some demo to do. What are you working on? Uh, we're just getting them started with like, what is science, science, uh, pseudoscience, yep. those kinds of questions. Fake science? We don't have fake science. Exactly. I'm going to let you do that because I don't want to get anywhere near that equipment. <laughs> Lauren? Yeah? Do you um, remember like the first um, one that we did, like the one where he asked us to find the equation of the line with um, three, tw 20, and some other coordinate? I'm sorry. Oh my gosh, it's so good to see you. <laughs> you too. Hi, Lauren. Hey. Hello. <laughs> students. Yeah, um, both of them. It was not on the homework, no. Like at the beginning of class today. Um, yeah, let me look. I totally have it right I'll tiptoe back in to get that other stuff in a moment, all right? Oh, I think I know what you're talking about. 320 and... Um, I'll get my mask and coffee. Yes. Hardware. No, I don't remember. Okay. All right, I'm coming. Are you rowing in the fall? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Now, what I just heard was so gratifying. If I'm not mistaken, you were helping each other, yes? Yeah. Yes. Wow, that was great. That was wonderful. Okay. And oftentimes, getting that head start from a colleague or from a peer is better. Oops. I got to put the people in the room here. Once I leave that room, I got to put my mask on. Um, I have to go Okay. Because I have a class in like five minutes. Okay. But I will start class early tomorrow. So. You, would you rather I just did a problem in two seconds for you, or you want to just do it tomorrow early? Um, tomorrow early, because right, I can't I remember you. the yeah. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks. Bye. So Lauren. Yeah. So you just got a mechanical help, right? What was that? You just got a little mechanical help with it. If uh, you were given two points. Um. No, I'm on the wrong track. So let me just show you very quickly. Let's say we have 2x squared plus uh, 20x minus 7. And all you wanted was the vertex, yes? Yeah. Okay, here's, here's one way, but we're going to keep attacking it via sketching in class. But what you want is to find this x value and then plug it in to the function. That gets you the vertex. Right. So tell me what minus b over 2a is there. Maybe negative 20 over 4. Exactly, which is negative 5, yes? Yeah. OK, and let's plug negative 5 in. you get that? Yeah, I wrote the equation down. 
Okay. So I didn't give you enough time to do it on your own? Yeah. Do you want me to do it now? Uh, well, are you following with negative 5 times negative 5 times 2 being 50? Yep. Minus 5 times 20 minus 100? Yep. Are you good at spotting that pattern yet that we know we're correct because we have two to one opposites? No, not yet. Okay. And then that's what the kind of the drawings were about today with the number five. If you do five minus five and five minus five as a square, you get four boxes. Five times five is 25. You get minus 25 and minus 25. And that's the squared term, and those are the linear terms. That's where they come from in the drawings. Can you see okay. a two to one opposite relationship there? Yeah. That's the only time that happens, right? Because if I put another 25 here, five, negative five times negative five, that's when I get zero for an area. That's the most important area. Okay? So anytime you see this two to one, you know you're right. Okay. Okay? So negative 57. So are you okay with uh, negative five is the X and negative 57 is the Y? Yeah, yeah, that's helpful. Uh, you got another class right now? Cause I want to take this one step further and I will tomorrow as yeah, we you clear understanding on this. So you got a minute? Yeah. Okay, so are you okay with zero negative seven as the Y intercept? Yeah. Am I on the increasing or decreasing side of this? Can you tell? No. That tells you. That plus says the y-intercept, and obviously zero has to be on this side, right? Right. Zero is bigger than negative five. Right? Right. And so zero negative seven is and it's going up at 20 to one right here. That's where it's going up at 20 to one. That's what that is showing us. Okay. Okay, now, last thing, and that's why I haven't done this yet. I wanna do it for the class because I think we'll start to see the numbers work. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put this in graphing form. So instead of writing that, I'm gonna write it in graphing form, and here's an eraser. In graphing form, the two is there, and all I have to do is show the vertex. And the vertex, I'm going to write x plus 5 squared minus 57. I'm right here. Are you with me? Yep. Okay. From negative 5 to 0, how much have I changed? Let's say grandma's stuck south of the border in Massachusetts, mile marker 5 on Route 91, and she has to work her way to the border. Zero. How much does she have to walk? Five miles. Five miles, right? Mm -hmm. But we're squaring. When I put a zero in here, I'm squaring it. So right now, she's walking five miles in that direction. When I square it, haven't I gone up 25 units? Yeah. And what am I doing to that 25 units here? Multiplying by two. And if you multiply by two, how much are you going up? 50. 50. Units. And if I add 50 to negative 57, if I add 50 to negative 57, where am I at? Negative seven. Isn't that where I want it to be? Yeah. So you're really doubling okay. the squaring process. Okay. Okay? And yeah. I want to have that conversation with everybody. Okay. But because you asked for a little extra help, you got a little extra conversation. I'm not okay. keeping you from a class, I hope. No, no. Okay. <laughs> All right, so that make a little more sense as we, you know, yeah, keep, talking, keep talking about it. Okay. Not easy to see. No. <laughs> okay. It's going to take some time. It's going to take some time. It's going to take some time to actually conceptualize what's going on. But right. mechanically, mechanically is going to come before the conceptual. And okay. you're not going to get the mechanical right without the practice. So we do it every day. Okay. All right? Yeah. Anything else? No, that's all. It's great you're taking a minute. Oh, you enjoy you. your day. Okay, you too. All right. Bye-bye now.